Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're all doing well. It is 12.09 p.m. Oh my god, it's a new month. What month is it? It's May! It's May 5th! Oh god! I move in like 20 days. Yikes. Anyway, I, I hope we're having a fantastic day today. We're going to do some... Just a discussion topic for today. Uh, I am going to be playing World of Warcraft in the background and collecting some stuff. Uh, so, uh, I wanted to discuss uh, and talk about some World of Warcraft roleplay today because I have kind of been... I think the right word is indoctrinated. <laughs> uh, I have fell in love with World of Warcraft roleplay. As you can tell, I'm in full transmog, which we don't actually have transmog in World of Warcraft. I actually have all these items on. Um, full transmog. I look amazing. Look at me. Look at me. Fantastic. Anyway, um, so yeah, I've kind of been a little bit of indoctrinated uh, with World of Warcraft roleplay because I've been having just such a good time, dude. Such a good time. So I've been roleplaying with the Scarlet Crusade Guild here on Crusader Strike for a while now, uh, and I haven't been... Um, I haven't been, like, recording it or doing anything. I've kind of just been enjoying it, you know? Because it's kind of hard to get when you're seeing it on stream. Like, I, I, it's hard for me to, like, understand it because, like, I'm trying to read everything in my head with everybody's voices and all that. But I'm going to show you a little bit of what's been going on. So, uh, something I do want to mention is how much fun I've been having with just role-playing, man. It's been great. It's been great. So, if I show you my total RP which is uh, their stuff. Yeah, let, let's just start off with the at-a-glance stuff. Okay? So, blessed. Zoth appears like he's been blessed by a powerful paladin directly in his pupils. So, like, right in there is a faint golden glow. And that's not from the blessing. Maybe I should illustrate that a little bit better. Uh, but there was a huge RP scene that happened a few nights ago with... Um, the GM of Scarlet Crusade, which I will call the High Lord because that's his title. Um, and a bunch of other people who were involved. And if we look here, uh, we have Tattered Nobleman, which he might have been a noble once, but due to his clothing, you can barely tell. That's due to roleplay that happened, and I'll go into that in a sec. Jeweled, which is the rings I have. I don't need to go into that. Uh, Stonebridge, Family Crest. Um, adorned on his belt loop is a family crest belonging to the noble family Stonebridge. The crest has a crack down the middle of it, meaning, uh, and illustrating that the family is no longer, because we did roleplay that as well. And it's Centurion. Uh, Zoth bears the rank of Centurion within the Scarlet Crusade, which I might add looks a lot better up there, over there. If you look at the top, uh, you can see all my stuffs. Speaking of this, uh, I have been having an experience within World of Warcraft roleplay. Uh, originally, I didn't like it. I didn't like that it was no voice. I didn't like that it was um, it was different from 5M roleplay. I didn't like it at all because it was different, right? But now that I've had the experience of, you know, playing it for, you know, a few few weeks now, I really enjoy it. Yeah, it was a little weird, but... Now that I've had the experience, I wanted to sit down for an hour and um, kind of speak about, one, my experience, two, go over some of the backstory that had happened, and uh, kind of just go over how I'm feeling about it now and just talk about it, comparing it to my old roleplay, which was 5M. So, um, we have been doing a lot of roleplay. And I'll show you that, and I'll illustrate that by just showing you uh, my backstory. So if we look here, we can see that my... Here's my backstory, and let me put it in the center screen. Here's my backstory. So we can see that this fucking program is super, super nuts and awesome. And if we scroll down, we can see the history. And then we can see kind of like a journal entry thing. Where we have the year, the month. Uh, and when I started this was the 18th of April which is when this started, right? Um, and it's now the 5th of May. Um, 
Soth left Ravenhole Manor with renewed purpose, which was the last RP scene. So every one of these have happened in game. So all these like little chapter things, these are all things that have happened and not me just saying backstory. The backstory is here. This is the backstory. This is the stuff that didn't actually happen in game. Everything onwards happened. Zoth and a few others pushed the device Brotherhood out of Elwyn all the way to Moonbrook. A messenger will be ambushed. A hideout will be discovered by the majority of the Alliance, right? So that is the quest leading through Ellen, Ellen Forest into Westfall and going through that, right? Invading the Dead Mines, you know, going into the dungeon Dead Mines and then killing uh, Van Cleef. That was done as well. And if we look through, like we can see like the Private Hendel storyline and going into Scarlet Monastery for my runes and stuff like that. These are all things that happen in game. That's the way I like to role play, right? It's uh, by your actions in game. And um, I have been having a really fun time. I have been treated very kindly by the uh, people who uh, are in the Scarlet Monastery, or sorry, Scarlet Crusade Guild. Um, they have been very, very kind by, you know, be making me look cooler than I am, right? Let me, let me give you an example. So um, I went into uh, SM or Scarlet Monastery alone as a rogue level 47, and I wanted to go and get the Scarlet Tower Bird, right? This Tower Bird specifically, this is a drop. It's a 1.7% drop, right? Really low. You have to kill the last boss in armory to get it. And you have to kill uh, a bunch of like, you have to kill a, a, a boss, first of all. And I wanted to do this solo because it, it, it makes sense. It's the rogue backstory. Um, but uh, you had to kill the boss. <laughs> and then you had to kill a bunch of like uh, little little guys, right? And to get it to drop. And I got it, of course. I got it on my fucking second run through, of course, right? Um, but I wanted to have a little bit more meaningful uh, event happen, right? So like, I went in and got this. But what does that mean for my character, right? So what I did was I went and took off my guild tabard, because their guild tabard looks like kind of like the Scarlet Crusade tabard. That's kind of the idea. Um, so then that's like the tabard everybody gets before they go and collect their Scarlet tabard. But I, I went in, got mine, and I wanted it to be a little bit more meaningful. So I took off my tabard, and I'll illustrate this in my backstory as well. You can read it while I'm talking. Uh, if we go, let me see where we can start. Uh-huh. Yep, silence. Oh, it's rebirth. It's these, uh, it's this paragraph here. These two that I'm going to read. But I'm not going to read. You're going to read. I'm going to talk about my experience and how it translated to a thing. Okay? So. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you. So. Um, what, what happened was I went into Scarlet Monastery, I got my tabard, and I wanted it to be more meaningful. So I went to Light, Light's Hope, uh, or sorry, the Light's, uh, Cathedral in Stormwind, and then I sat there without my tabard on, right? And then I said, hey, Maros, I have, like, a small scene, uh, it'd be cool if you could attend, and, you know, I, I don't want to do this thing until you have attended, right? So he comes with, um, uh, four people total. So himself... Um, Protector Chiron, which is another character within the guild. Um, High Commander um, K. Luthor, right there. And um, and me, I guess, is I'm the fourth. And what happened was a small little scene where we knelt in front of the altar and prayed and whatever. And um, Marrow showed a little bit of a, his backstory about anytime he prays, the air turns cold because he has a connection to the royal bloodline within the Lich King and stuff like that. Um, and uh, uh, my goal for that scene was to just, hey, can you bless this thing? I think it's corrupted because I did take it off of one of the people inside of Scarlet Monastery. Can you bless it and bless the corruption out of it? What followed was something a little bit bigger than what I was expecting. And uh, what had happened was, um, it's like, we need to go see our family home. That's what the High Lord said, right? High Lord Maros. He said, we need to go see our family home, then we can deal with this issue, right? 
And what what it was was like a, I guess coronation, but not like oh I'm the king, but like oh I'm getting promoted within the guild, right? So, we went to Ravenhoft or R Ravenloft Manor, I think that's what it's called. Um, Ravenholt, Holt with a T. Um, and then there is a Season of Disco Discovery Specials crystal behind the uh, Ravenhoft Manor. Um, and, um, and we went and, like, drank of the waters, and then they told me that there would be a vision. And it was really cool! It was really cool! And then it was blessed, uh, the, uh, the tabard was blessed, and then I donned it as a newly made centurion within the Scarlet Crusade. And it was a really cool scene, and it wasn't anything I was expecting, but we could do it regardless because of the tools we have in World of Warcraft, right? Because what we did was we, we all flew to so so sure. We walked first from the cathedral to the flight path, right? But we were literally walking on our mounts like this, right? Which takes a long time, but really opens up the world and makes it even breathe even more than what it does, right? And we just walked and it was four of us and it was really cool dude it was really cool and we were all just walking like this and we had four of us it was awesome um one of the things that Mero said and this is a side note uh he said he doesn't really have that many rogues who role play in his guild because the thing is it's like if you're someone of the light usually you're a paladin right but I didn't join because of the, oh, it's the Scarlet Crusade, I want to be a member of the Light or whatever. I, I joined because it's like, oh, roleplay, I want to I want to be involved in this, this seemed cool. Uh, to keep that in mind, right? Um, but yeah, it was really fun. And it, um, it really dawned on me, the difference of roleplay doesn't mean it's a negative thing, right? So, just to remind you, if you're not really ingrained in the roleplay scene within 5M, the way the roleplay is in 5M is that everything you say is what you say in your own voice, right? Unless you can make other voices. And no one really knows your character backstory, right? No one really knows like all the stuff you went through and stuff like that, unless like you are telling them actively, right? Um, and it's also a different genre right it's like based in real life like 2022 and like cops and robbers and stuff like that but in world of warcraft it's a little bit different where one you don't speak there is no there is no voice uh, even though there could be right people could use their voice and i think that would be fun right um even for the antisocial folks like myself but uh, one of the things that's a huge difference is that you can click on somebody who has the add-on, and anybody who's role-playing on Season Discovery has this add-on, where you have a few things. One, you can read their entire backstory, which is both a positive and a negative, because there could be metagaming that can happen. But you have this really cool thing, which is at a glance. At a glance is such a cool feature. I wish every role-play I've ever done had it. What is at a glance? Well, at a glance is very fucking simple, guys. If you look at someone, what what do you see? You see their clothing, their face, you know, maybe a, a hidden weapon if they want to reveal that in the thing. Stuff like that. Small, but impactful, right? So, for me, I'm going to read them again, right? Uh, so, he is blessed, which means there's like a little bit of like light radiating from him. That can be inferred. Um, and he has a a uh, faint golden glow in his eyes and his irises specifically like very faint um and in tattered noble this just is an illustration of my backstory because his family was killed by the defias brotherhood he is now a disconsecrated and dis deconsecrated nobleman that he is tattered and like he like he would have dressed like a nobleman he kind of does kind of doesn't that is my illustration to fit some of my backstory in, right? Then we have Jeweled, right? Going a little bit into detail, right? Even though it's at a glance, I can go into detail. So you see specific rings, right? So you see um, a ring uh, that has a Stormwind crest on it, which is his index finger, right? So right here, he has a Stormwind uh, ring, and that is from a quest. Uh, steel Stormwind, or Steel, steel Rin, sorry. Um, and then that was illustrated on that. 
then he has another one, which is the Defias Renegade Ring, which is on his middle finger on his uh, right hand. Um, and that is to show that he was ex Defias, right? Um, and then on his left hand, his middle finger, he has um, the Proudmore Sigil um, on his middle finger on his left hand. I think it's his left hand. I might have gotten a thing. Uh, I might have gotten it mixed up, but it's fine. The point is that you can use this at a glance feature to um, show a little bit of your character and um, show other people without having to read your entire fucking backstory, some of the things that might interest them, right? And if you're a good role player, I'm not, but if you are a good role player, you will use utilize these to um, to connect with other people, right? So one of the things that Maros did, which is the GM of the Scarlet Crusade Guild, uh, was he grabbed my hand and he said, like, let me look at this ring, uh, because, you know, he has connect connection to um, Lordaeron and all that, that seeing a, a Stormwind, um, like, sigil or signet ring would be a little bit of alarming to him, and that's something he might want to look at, right? And uh, I also illustrated that point that there was a little bit of shadow coming off the ring, because in the story of... Um, Westfall, Elwyn, Red Ridge, and all, and Duskwood, it all leads back to uh, Anixia giving you this ring. And I think that what something that what Anixia would do, because she is a calculated fucking dragon who is running this whole kingdom into the ground because that's what she's doing, that she would put like some kind of spy or scrying thing on your ring, right? It's like, hey, this is a pow powerful person who just dismantled two nobles that I had under my uh, gaze working against Stormwind, uh, I want to see what the fuck this guy's up to, right? And then Marrow's role played that as, you know, divine sense or whatever to where he can tell that something's wrong with the ring. And then I, I'm pretty sure he ended up blessing it or something. That was a while ago. And in fact, I'm pretty sure I streamed that. Uh, and it was awesome. Like, it was awesome. It's, it's small things like that that really, really uh, change it up. You know?